Well, good morning and welcome back to the Shepherd's Word Church and as always, most importantly, welcome back to this study of our Shepherd's Word, this beautiful love letter that our Heavenly Father has sent to us. And we're going to return back to the four Gospels and this will be part 15. And and uh, we want to remember that that in all Christ's ministry, that the, the three or, or a little better than three years, three and a half years, that, that uh, Christ, he brought the same teachings and miracles again and again to the many different locations and towns and cities so that all of the peoples in the region of Israel, they would have the same opportunity to receive faith and salvation so many of his miracles that we see and and the teachings they they may appear similar but are in fact different circumstances and different people you have to look closely to see that so but so i mean just as a professor will teach the same information uh, to a new set of students in a new semester and so i'll try to point those out to you and hoping that you would be able to understand Christ's ministry better as we try to put it in a chronological order. And at this time, at this point in the Bible where we are, it's uh, probably uh, eight, actually AD 27. Um, no, I'm sorry, um, yeah, AD 27, because at the end of AD 26 is when he was baptized. Uh, by John, and John pointed pointed him out, and of course, then the uh, the testing of the forty days and forty nights, and then of course the winter came upon, and so now we're in the the following year, and and probably close to around July at that time of the year. So, uh, but also remember what John said that if all of his miracles and all of his teachings were written down he didn't suppose that the world could contain all of the books and now in our last study we saw that Christ had named the apostles those 12 an apostle meaning to be sent forth but he at this point of our study he, he has not yet sent them forth but let's just ask a, a word for our Heavenly Father's blessing on this study. Our Heavenly Father, we do ask that you be with us and bless us, Lord, that you would be our teacher, that this word would go out to those who want to know more about what does your word actually say. So, Lord, we ask that you continue to open eyes, open ears, and bless those who seek to receive it. And then we thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. So we're going to... Um, uh, pick it back up with Luke and I'm going to go to Luke chapter 6 and uh, verse 12 and and this picks up that again uh, that he had chosen those apostles those to be sent forth and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God and when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. And that's the, that twelve that, that uh, would be apostles, those that he would send out, send forth. Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes, and Judah the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. And he came down with them, with the apostles, and stood in the plain, and the company of his disciples, and of course that's, there's many who are his disciples, that simply means those who are disciplined in his word or seek to be disciplined in his word. So he stood in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed, 
Don't read over that. They came to hear that word and to be healed of their diseases. And so that covers a great area of Israel from, from uh, uh, north to south and east to west, uh, many miles. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. Everyone came to him, and they were healed. 19, and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went out virtue out of him, and he healed them. And as I had shown you in last week's study, this word it is translated virtue. It's dunamis, and it's the same word uh, from which we derive dynamite. So it represents great, awesome power. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. And this word blessed that we're seeing, it actually uh, could be translated as happy, because that's what it is. Those that uh, are hungry now for his word to devour and consume that word, you shall be filled. If you seek his word, he will give it to you. Just as uh, just as we remember that he, he teaches, if a, if a son asked his father for a fish, would he give him a scorpion? No, he would give him the best. So all you have to do is ask. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. And of course, we have a lot to weep about in this flesh life, but that time is coming when there will be no more tears that we will laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. And they will. Um, you know, I can think of many that, that I was uh, very close to, uh, even set in church with. And then when I be, when, in, in teaching, when I begin to tell them that there was no rapture, that that is something that was invented by man. Uh, by, it was picked up from Margaret MacDonald. And the Lord, the Lord knew it was coming. In, in Ezekiel chapter 13, he, said, he tells us he's against those who teach his children to fly to save their souls. And of course, that, that, that I also uh, preach against that first religion that was given to Cain by Satan. And that's in the Bible and it's in history. And that's called Easter. God says, do not bring that into my sanctuary. It's the one thing that he says is it makes him jealous, that drives him right out of his sanctuary. And so, yes, many have separated me because of those teachings, because they love the teachings of those false prophets who tickle their ears with that religion and replacing the word of God with religion. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So as you teach truth, you share truth, and, and, and you're, you're separated and, and called evil, remember that the prophets were treated the same way. So be happy that you're included in that. But woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. And you see so many of these fake pastors that teach the, uh, the uh, falsehoods that tickle the ears of many. And of course, they are rich. People love them, love to hear it, and give them all their money. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. So all those uh, false teachers that they're they're full now they're they're well blessed that time of hunger is coming woe unto you that laugh now for ye shall mourn and weep woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you and this is to those false teachers that he's telling us about that everybody's I, I see that many of the quotes and things that they share and teach and post and and everybody says, thank you for the knowledge that you're sharing. They speak well of them, but they're teaching falsehood. So woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So those false prophets, uh, they, they are having 
a, a great time now, a great day. And most of this uh, chapter 6, it's the Lord is teaching this, the multitudes and other disciples the same things that we've already covered before. Many of these things that we read, we've already studied those when he taught them to his uh, earlier disciples and those who are called the uh, apostles. So I'm going to skip over a great part of it uh, because we actually have covered all those teachings. And as I said, that as he travels, he teaches again and again and again so that everybody receives that truth. But I want to uh, point out uh, a couple verses, verse 39. And he says, and that's in chapter 6, verse 39. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch. And yes, many of the leaders, and this is spiritual and governmental, that they are blind, but many are following them and they will follow them right into the ditch. You can look today and see that happening. Be very well aware of it. And verse uh, 49, <clears throat> but he that heareth and doeth, so it's very important that, that, we, that we hear and that we do. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation built an house upon the earth. So if you're hearing and you're not doing, you're just like this man that, it, that has a house without a foundation against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. So when the Lord gives you truth, you need to not only be a hearer, but a doer. So we're going to now uh, begin with uh, Luke chapter 7 and verse 1. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. Now this is going to sound similar to other uh, uh, healings that we've seen of a centurion's servant, but this one is different. This is a different uh, time and, a, and we'll see the different circumstances. But a centurion, that's a, a Roman soldier, it probably equal to like what we'd call a colonel, but he may have any place from 100 to 800 soldiers under him. So he was in a position of great power. And when he heard of Jesus, this one that had the, the servant who was sick, ready to die, when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And of course, uh, uh, Many, when they, when they had servants, they literally became part of the family. They were just like a son uh, or, or somebody close to the family. So, so yes, he loved this one, and he was right at the point of death. But in some of the others that we've seen very similar to this, that he, that he sent other servants, that this, this he sent those of the elders of the Jews, beseeching that he would come and heal his servant, and when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. They're saying this, this Roman centurion, he's very worthy, and they're praying that he will do it. Continue, for he loveth our nation. He loves that nation of Israel, and he hath built us a synagogue. So... So he had the means, he had the manpower with a great, great army and uh, the finances that he actually built them a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him saying unto him, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord, trouble not thyself for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. And none of us are worthy, none of us. 
Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. He's very humble to the Lord. He, he truly believes in the Lord. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. And he truly believes that, that with just a word, that we see many times that Christ would, would touch like even the leper, lay hands on him. But he did not need to with just a word. He does not need to touch or, or, or be touched. With just a word, there can be healing. And even the dead can be raised with just a word. So he said, with just a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. So he understands authority. He's under authority. He has those that he has to answer to. And of course, he has a great many to answer to him. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth, doeth it. So he's saying, Lord, with just a word, you can heal my servant. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And so this is very similar to some of the others that we've seen with a centurion and, and a servant. But he's making the point that he has not seen so great a faith in Israel that these who were not of, of the tribe of Israel are showing such great faith. What an example. And they that were sent regarding returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. So with just that word, that uh, accepting that faith, he was healed. <clears throat> Verse 11, And it came to pass, the day after that, he went into a city called Nain. Now this is actually still known where this location is, this, this ancient city. And it's uh, not far from Endor. And you remember the story about the witch of Endor. And so it's not far from that, from that area. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. So all this crowd just wanting to be near the Lord and hear his words and see the miracles, hear the teachings. Now when he came nigh unto the gate of the city, Behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. She had no other children, just this one son. And she was a widow. She had lost her husband, and now her only son had died. She had no one. And much people of the city was with her. So obviously she was a very beautiful person and loved by the people. Many people were with her as, as they carried out her son. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And the Lord watches you, and he will have compassion on you. Sometimes you don't have to ask. The Lord sees, and he has compassion. And he said unto her, weep not. Because you can believe she was weeping. She was hurting. Her heart breaking. Had no family left. And he came and touched the bier when that means the the uh, the, the bed or, or the uh, what they were carrying the one who was who who had passed away on carrying him and he didn't touch the the uh, the uh, the corpse or or uh, or anything and he didn't need to he just touched the bier and they that bear him stood still they stopped and he said young man i say unto thee arise so this is the same way that we had read that the uh, the uh, twelve year old maiden that he had said, uh, "Damsel, arise!" But he took her by the hand. This one he didn't touch. Uh, he just said, "Arise!" And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother, and there came fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us and that God hath visited his people. So this was an amazing thing that he walked into a, 
a, a town that he had never been in before and had never uh, taught in before, and they saw these great works. 17, and this rumor, and of course that means this, these sayings of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. 18, and the disciples of John, this is John the Baptist, showed him all these things. They're going back and reporting back to John. Now, you may remember that when the, at the day that Christ was baptized, that John had told everybody that this is the Lamb of God. He knew who he was. Uh, he, was, he, was he knew the scriptures. John the Baptist, he was uh, a son of a priest, so he was of the priest line. He would have uh, been to, to the pro school of the prophets, and, and he knew the word of God, what it says, the prophecies. And he also had the Holy Spirit pointing out the Christ to him. So there was no doubt as to he knew who the Christ was. But uh, on that same day, uh, after he had, had pointed out Christ, uh, Herod had arrested him and put him in prison, but he was released. Now that's not, it doesn't say he's released, but we find another time that he's back out baptizing and preaching the, that, the, uh, uh, that the kingdom of heaven is near. So he was back out teaching again. And so the, at this point in time, he has been arrested a second time and he's about to be put to death. He's in the prison and about to be put to death. And his, his, uh, so his disciples go back and report back all the things that they're seeing of Christ. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying, Art thou he that should come or, or look we for another? Now that's not a real good translation because he's asking, Is this the time or should we look for another? He knows who the Christ is. But there's two comings of Christ. And so he's asking, you know, what, which, which coming or which, what things are we going to see now? Because we have the time that Christ came for our salvation and for the healing. And also there is that second coming when he comes in vengeance to destroy all wickedness. So 20, when the men were come unto him, they came to Jesus, they said, John Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. So I want to take you to some of those, um, uh, some of those uh, prophecies. And he had also, had, he had said, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. But let's turn back to Isaiah. I want to go back to Isaiah chapter 29 to start with. And we're going to look at verses 18 and 19. And this is <clears throat> the uh, prophecies of Christ uh, uh, in the Old Testament. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek shall increase their joy in the Lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. I want to turn to Isaiah chapter 35 and we're going to read verses uh, 3 through 6. Other prophecies, strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. So all those who were even paralyzed, uh, that he healed them. They, they got up and walked. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not, behold. Now this part, he, didn't, he, did, not, he did not show John's uh, disciples. 
Behold, your God will come with vengeance. He'd never mentioned that. And, he, and he's not showing vengeance. because So he's teaching him that this is the first coming, not the time of vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. So he's come for salvation, come for teaching, and to bring salvation, but not for vengeance. Five, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. So the healing of all those that the John's disciples are watching. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 60 and read verses uh, one through three, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and it was a very dark time that, as, as we'll continue to read, we'll see that there was not the word of God being taught, that all those that we'll read that we're of the serpent seed had placed themselves in the seat of Moses claiming to be the lawgivers. But as John had called them, you generation of serpents and Christ refers to them the same way and gross darkness, the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentile shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And so all those things that they're seeing at that time, even the uh, disciples of John are seeing this, that he is bringing forth light, making the word of God known, not teaching religion, but bringing forth light. The Gentiles, just as we see the Roman centurions, uh, they're coming to light, they're hearing the word of God, they're believing and uh, kings to the brightness of thy rising. And the, even like Herod is hearing the word of God. And that's one thing that we, that we read about uh, Herod. He liked John the Baptist. He didn't want to see him put to death. It grieved him that he did because he loved listening to him. So let's, let's go also to Isaiah chapter 61. And I'm gonna read verses one and two. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. That means the humble, those who are humble enough to receive it. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, giving hope to all, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now this is a part that you'll see that he did not uh, express. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So there's, there's two comings in there. And so uh, John knows that he is the Messiah, but he's asking, what are we gonna see? Because many had believed that Christ was going to overthrow all the governments of the world at that time and establish his kingdom. But he's saying, no, that's not the time. So let's, let's look at this again um, in uh, Luke uh, chapter seven. I'm gonna pick it back up with uh, verse 22 again. Then Jesus answering said unto them, go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised to the poor, the gospel is preached. And as again, he did not mention the vengeance and, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. <clears throat> Let's continue with verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. He says, what went you out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? And, and that, that's speaking of a teacher that he just, he teaches whatever the way the wind is blowing at that time, whatever uh, is happening in the world. And, and you see that today as, as uh, the things change in the laws that the churches, they change their teachings. Or if you have 
a, uh, a, a pastor, just like many parents do, that if one of his parents, uh, if one of his children say, hey, I, I'm, I'm a sodomite, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be gay. And, and of course, they will immediately quit teaching what the word of God says and start to justify it. And of course, uh, a parent is going to defend their children in that respect. But John was not one that would uh, lean with the blowing of the wind. He taught the word of God straight on. So no, would you go to see a reed shaking in the wind? N not hardly. But what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? And of course, no, John was not dressed uh, elegantly. He was wearing camel skin, the dress of a prophet. He was a rough character. Behold, they which are gloriously appareled and live delicately are in king's courts. And that's not where John was. But what went you out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And he's quoting from Malachi, the, uh, the last uh, chapters and verses of Malachi, that God said that he would send this messenger to prepare the way of the coming Christ. And uh, we're, we're also going to see that messenger come at that time of, visit, of vengeance that uh, we see those two prophets that come. One, one looks a lot uh, just like... Uh, Elijah and one just like Moses, those uh, two sons of oil, as we see, that the Lord will send. 28, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. He was the greatest of all the prophets, and he was the last prophet before Christ. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And of course, flesh and blood cannot enter into heaven. So there's even greater works to be done when we leave this flesh. You know, many think that, that in this time, you, when we leave this world, that uh, you float around on a cloud playing a harp. No, remember what we read in Revelation when John uh, was uh, learning from the angel and he dropped down to worship the angel. The angel said, no, don't do that. I'm just like you. I was even one of the prophets. And so when you leave this world and we're still in the middle of this battle, there's still work to be done. And so the battle continues. So it, that you will be even do even greater things than John the Baptist did in the flesh. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. So he's saying that all the people heard him, even the publicans, those that are looked down upon by, the, by Israel, they were justified, they were baptized with the baptism of John. 30, but the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. And of course they did. They, they did not accept the teachings of John because as we see that, uh, we, we, we've seen that uh, first of all, those of the descendants of Cain became the scribes for Judah. And then in Ezra and Nehemiah again, uh, we saw that they had taken over the priesthood. And so here in this time of Christ, there are a few that are of the true house of the Levi, uh, that are true priests, but the greatest majority were false teachers that had removed the word of God, just like all the churches uh, have today, removed the word of God and brought in religion. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? Now what generation he's talking about? This generation of the serpent seed. And to what are they like? These ones that are uh, giving you this religion that they had that in that day. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. So they, uh, they give you a relig religion even in, in their weddings. 
we have mourned to you and you have not wept. And so, or again, religion, not the word of God, even in their funerals. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he hath a devil. So these uh, that gave a, a false religion and false teachings and left out the, the word of God, but John the Baptist, he has brought the word of God. And what do they say? They say that he has a devil. 34, the son of man is come eating and drinking, and you say, behold, a gluttonous man. That's what they say about the Lord himself. And a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. And so, in other words, wisdom will show you who the children are. I want to uh, take you to the book of Luke. Uh, uh, chapter 11 and we're going to we're going to read verses 49 through 50 <clears throat> and um, I'm, I'm actually I'm going to you won't have it I'm going to read verse 48 truly you bear witness that you allow the deeds of your fathers for they indeed killed them and you build their sepulchers verse 49 therefore also said the wisdom of God. You remember that's what Christ had po just pointed out to us. The wisdom of God. I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. And again, what generation? The generation of the serpent seed that that blood will be required. This, um, as as we as we have st in our previous studies that uh, blood guilt. In other words, all the blood that has been spilt in the earth, it will it will be brought forth, and each will wear that blood that they have spilt, showing their guilt. So it, they will each pay for it. They will be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel, remember who killed Abel? That was Cain, and his descendants had taken over the, all of the uh, teachings and, and replaced them with religion. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias. Remember who Zacharias was? That was John the Baptist's father. That was his name, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you lawyers. Now this is all those who are uh, lawyers of, of the law of God, the supposedly the teachers. Woe unto all you lawyers, you teachers of the law, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. What does that mean? They've taken away that word of God and taken away the knowledge of the word of God. They're teaching religion. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in you hindered. You hindered, in other words, how'd they hinder them? With false teachings, they could not receive truth. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. The Lord God himself seeking to destroy the Lord God himself. Let's um, let's go to First Corinthians, and <clears throat> chapter one. I'm gonna read verses twenty-four through thirty-one. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, He is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So you will see the wisdom in the children those who are truly the children of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Those things that, that uh, many will count as foolishness, there's much more wisdom in that than men who consider themselves wise. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brother, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So no, God, what, 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 who did he call to destroy the giant? He called a, a young child, David. 
he destroyed Goliath. So he uses what looks weak to destroy the mighty. And, and those who think that they are wise, they're wise of the world, he uses the, the word of God and the actions of God to make them look foolish. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. So with just a word, there's nothing there. With just a word, he brings it forth that, that no flesh should glory in his presence. No, we've got nothing to brag about of ourselves, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. We see the wisdom. Those who are con con consider themselves wise, they're blind, they cannot see it. But he has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that's our salvation. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. If you've got something to glory about, give God that praise and honor and glory. So let's turn back to uh, Luke chapter 7. <clears throat> and we're going to pick it back up with uh, verse 35. But wisdom is justified of all her children. You can see who the children are, just as he said, you know, pay attention to the tree whose fruit you eat from, that uh, those, those false teachers, those trees that, that bear fruit of falsehood. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, and we're all sinners, and this woman, she was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Now there's a, a she's going to anoint the feet of Christ. Now there's another anointing that happens just prior to his being taken, being arrested. Um, and, and that was in the house of Lazarus and, and Mary and Martha. This is different. And I know many try to lump this together because this is very early in his ministry that this one comes. And, and that second anointing won't happen till to, like almost two years later. And so, and there, there's many that uh, try to attribute this to being Mary Magdalene. And uh, there's nothing that says that it is, but again, even speaking of Mary Magdalene, you know, it says that she had uh, seven, seven evil spirits that were cast out of her. And there were so many horrible stories made up about Mary Magdalene. They say that she was a harlot. Well, you know, if you say a woman's a sinner, that's where men's minds basically goes. They think sexual. And so they say that she was a harlot. No, there's nothing that ever said she was a harlot. Just says that she had seven evil spirits in her. And, and uh, you know, there were stories made up about that Christ married her and had children. That would be stupid, that the father of all would marry one of his children and have more uh, children in the flesh. So that's, that's teachings of idiots that don't know who Christ is. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, I think... Uh, one place where it says that she uh, was, uh, I think we're, we're all, I guess you might say, engaged for marriage. We all are. We're all, those who believe in him are of the bride of Christ. But, uh, you know, some of the truth that we know about Mary Magdalene is believed that she was actually an older woman, a businesswoman, that uh, was not a young woman. But there's a lot of, a lot of falsehoods that people like to cram into the Bible that is not in the Word of God. But she um, brought an alabaster box of ointment. So this would be a very expensive ointment. And stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet 
and anointed them with the ointment. Just literally just her heart breaking and her tears washing his feet. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself. Now this is just he's thinking this. He's not talking out loud saying this man if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering, so he heard his thoughts, and he's going to answer him. Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Big difference in that. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman, I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. And of course, walking those dusty roads uh, and sandals, you, it was a custom to uh, your guests to put out water so they could wash their feet. He said, you gave me no water to wash my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little." And so how many sins do we have that we need to be forgiven? And so this one, that she acknowledged her sins, she knew that this one could forgive her sins, and she so loved the Lord that he loved her that much to forgive all her sins. How much do you love the Lord? And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. And, I, and so looking at this one Simon and looking at this this uh, beautiful woman who so loved the Lord, remember what the Lord had said, chapter 7, verse 35, but wisdom is justified of all her children. So Simon was not one of the children, but this woman was one of the children, that wisdom of God upon her. So let us thank our Heavenly Father for His Word, that He is our teacher. Our Heavenly Father, we truly do love You, Lord. We thank You, Father, that, that Your Word would go out to those who want to know more about what does Your Word actually say, that You have opened eyes, opened ears, and that we pray that those who sought have received, Father. We thank You, Lord. And Lord, we give You all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' precious name, amen.